Hey, it's Courtney. I'm back again with, of course, another Sailor and Moon related video. I have this shirt. It is actually for Sailor Moon Crystal. You can see the logo down the bottom. Yep. So, again, love Sailor Moon Crystal. Did I mention that it has very nice animation again? It's just awesome. But uh, I'm back again to talk a little bit more uh, about some Sailor Moon related stuff to kind of give my opinions and share things with you. Um, as I said before, I had like a dozen VHS tapes where I recorded episodes of Sailor Moon and I wasn't lying, I actually counted them. I have a dozen of them, but I didn't want to bring them you know, all in here. But I did find some other things I have. Um, of course, besides my um, tuxedo mask plushie that I have up here on my shelf, um, I also have my little Funko Pop Sailor Moon keychain. Because it was a buy one, get one half off. Uh, so um, I got a, a Sonic the Hedgehog one for my brother-in-law for Christmas. And I found a Sailor Moon. So I went ahead and got that. And of course, again, as I said... Still have my little, my little tuxedo mask. There's my little tuxedo doll, uh, and uh, so I just want to keep him on hand, just because I love him. He's so cute. I'm still gonna find more of him, by the way. Um, speaking of dolls that are cute, a long time ago, um, there was something called a Suncoast video, and it used to always be in the mall, and you could find. I found lots of good stuff on, on DVDs there. I mean, it was called video, but, you know, they sold DVDs and stuff. But uh, they always had some nice Sailor Moon merchandise. And uh, I went in there one time and found these dolls. Um, I no longer have them in the box because around the time that I found them, I was in you know that, that phase where, you know, you don't keep stuff in the box of uh, you want to take it out and play with it or you want to display it because um they did come with little little stands uh, and of course they had like the little transformation you know wands uh. so um but um so they're no longer in the box i took them out and i've had them for a, a long time since i was in high school and uh, i had to uh clean them recently um so, uh, because I used to be a smoker, so a lot of stuff that I had, stuffed animals and things like that, kind of got stained with nicotine, which is really awful now that you think about it, which is probably a good uh, advertisement of not smoking. Uh, you will ruin all of your stuff. Plus, I also had a cat for a long time, so cat hair we get on everything. It wasn't exactly white, but... Uh, his fur got on like everything, so I kind of had to clean them, but, uh, so they do have their stands, and, uh, some of them still have their wands, and, uh, my tuxedo mask doll still has his top hat, but it sits really weird on his head, so I, uh, I just go ahead and keep it off of him, but, um, uh, so there were six of the dolls, you know, the five Sailor Guardians and tuxedo mask. So, but I still have them. Um, here is my, my Sailor Moon doll. Um, her little red hair ornaments that she used to have when uh, I had to wash her, the, uh, the bands uh, eroded over time. So after I washed her hair, they just completely melted and I had to get, um, you know, uh, little tiny, tiny hair hair ties to uh, fix it and uh, kind of the bands that you put like in like in little girl's hair but uh, they were too bulky so uh, I used to wear braces so the little bands that they used to put over my brackets I had some of those left over and they were much smaller so I was able to I was able to still keep her hair in her little her little pigtails and of course her uh, little red hair ornaments are supposed to you know be like also her her buns in her hair, but without the ornaments, it's just these uh, little pigtails. But uh, yeah, so um, their skirts are kind of weird here at the front, 
like this big bulky band on it. But uh, so, and of course, yeah, they're really short, like just like really short skirt, like just one inch, and you know, you can see the inner part of the leotard. They're not panties. I don't care what you will say. They're not panties. They're part of the leotard of their, you know, their uniform stuff. So, but, uh, I got my little Sailor Moon. And, uh, without the stands, they don't really stand very well. I think it's her hair. It kind of weighs her down a little bit. Um, next I have my Sailor, my Sailor Mercury. And, She's, she's still got some pretty bad staining on the back part of her outfit around, like, her bow and the top part of her sleeve and a little bit on her arm. But her hair is so short, and it's still, it's still pretty well well intact. Of course, it's, it's a short, bobby kind of hairstyle, so. And, uh, so. Um, it's, her bow is a little smaller than Sailor Moon's because uh, it, uh, it's not really covering her, her boobs very well. So, uh, but yeah, this is my Sailor, Sailor Mercury, and I don't think, no, wait, any of them will stand up without stands, but, um, okay, and, uh, then there's my Sailor Jupiter, uh, dupes. That's what Susan Roman, who was the, uh, English voice dub for like Deke and Cloverway, uh, the original, the OG uh, Sailor Jupiter. She calls her Sailor Jupes in a lot of the videos of uh, you know Comic Cons and anime conventions that she goes to. So I'm I'm kind of I kind I'm kind of digging it. So I'm gonna start calling her Jupes. <laughs> so uh, her bow is a little bit. Uh, better at hiding stuff. Um, I had to, of course, clean the dolls and wash the hair, so her, her ponytail's kind of doing this weird flip thing in the back. And, of course, she also came with uh, her little hair piece that had, like, you know, like, those kind of uh, hair ties that had, like, little beads on them, <clears throat> and you would, like, twist them, and you'd have, like, two beads, like, next to each other. Yeah, same as Salem's little Adongo. Uh, attachments, they kind of melted away, so I had to get another band to do it, and, uh, so, um, I also kind of had to trim her, her hair in the back a little bit, because, uh, it got really dirty, and it made her hair kind of uneven, so I had to kind of do a little bit of trimming, that's kind of another reason why her hair's sticking up like that. Um, I don't think I had to do anything <coughs> to my... Sailor Moon's hair. Uh, I just washed it and everything. Her hair still feels uh, a lot better than Jupiter's, though. It seems like the dolls, each doll had like some sort of different weird material for their hair. So, um, I cleaned it the best that I could to kind of make it soft, but uh, still didn't work very, very well. And then, of course, I have my Sailor Mars. And, uh, She's still got a, a little bit of staining. Uh, her hair her hair lifts up pretty weird in the back, but the back of her is actually a lot more uh, less stained than the front part of her. But yeah, she's also got this like this weird material for her hair. I, I don't like the way it feels, even though I, I washed it. Uh, very well. I followed all like all of these like doll tutorial videos online on how to clean like your doll's hair. So uh, but, you know, at least her bangs stayed kind of kind of nice. Uh, they kind of cover her eyes a little bit, but so um, my sailor my sailor Mars doll. Um, uh, very happy belated birthday to Katie Griffin who was uh, the voice of Sailor Mars in the the Deke the Deke dub and the Cloverway dub. Her birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday, Katie. Belated, but happy birthday. Uh, next, I've got my Sailor Venus doll. Um, 
her hair feels a little little bit better than um, the quality of Sailor Mars and Sailor Mercury's hair. Uh, Jupiter's hair is uh, a little weird too, but Sailor Venus's hair is actually kind of pretty soft. And uh, luckily, when I was able to wash her hair, the uh, the band attachment of the rubber band that has her little her little hair bow, it looks like it is close to wanting to like erode off, but the bow is still intact, so her hair is still s styled the way it's supposed to be, and uh, got her cleaned off pretty well too. Doesn't really have a, a lot of staining, but yeah. Her hair and Sailor Moon's hair are probably like the still softest of the hair that I have on them. And uh, just look at those shoes. I was always interested in Sailor Venus's shoes. So they like wrap up around her ankle. So that's just weird. I'd never actually seen shoes like that before. Where they just like come up and wrap around the back part of your ankle. So, but, so I guess, uh, kind of always dug Sailor V's shoes. Ugh. Call her Sailor V too, even though she's not in her Sailor V one, but still. So, always, always dug her shoes. So, and then of course I have my, my tuxedo mask. He has the worst hair. <laughs> ever seen I mean I mean I know it's just a doll but still he's got like this weird kind of part thing and uh, the back of his hair I had I had to trim it a little bit because it was like really really long and that's like tuxedo mask hair isn't that long uh, he he's you know got nice short immaculate looking hair so I kind of had to trim the back of it a little bit because you can see the back of his you can see the back of his neck now. When I got him, you couldn't see the back of his neck. It was like really, really long. So and his collars lift up all kind of weird. But he still has his bow tie. And uh, he still has his uh, you know his tuxedo outfit. It's actually more of like a dinner dinner jacket than a actual tuxedo. So because He's got like a really short jacket, so um, his sleeves are like really, really long. It's you know like a, a little boy wearing his dad's clothes. They're just like it's like they're not fitting him very well. And of course he's got his, his cape. So I took really good care when I had to clean him off a little bit to you know take care of his cape. But, but yeah, his his hair is just so weird and. It looks even weirder with the hat on, and plus the hat won't stay on his head. It's like his hair wants to like pop his hat off of his head. <laughs> but um, his mask doesn't come off all the way, but you can lift it up a little bit and see those baby blues a little bit better. So uh, yeah, so that's my little tuxedo mask. <laughs> so did I mention that I love tuxedo mask? Yeah, he's. He's my favorite, so I'm going to keep my dolls over here for a second, because I'll have to put them back over here, but, um, want to talk about VHS? Uh, I have all three Sailor Moon movies on VHS tape in these big, giant, white containers. So, remember, like, all sorts of Disney movies would come in these kind of containers, too, but, uh, so, these were all from Pioneer Entertainment. They handled the movie dubs, but they paid uh, they paid Deke to use like their music cues and stuff. So everybody always gets you know confused. So Deke didn't do the movies. Pioneer did. They just paid to use the the Deke music for the transformations and the background and everything. So um, so the Sailor Moon Super S movie which I just saw on Twitter, is going to be coming out next month to DVD, which I'm so excited about. I'm so excited about that, because that movie and Sailor Stars and Whatever Happens with Crystal and 
all the Moonies are all set. But so this is from Super S, the fourth season. Uh, the English title was Black Dream Hole, and um, I guess it's I guess it's okay. Um, the fourth season of Sailor Moon was always the one that was kind of like the the goofier one and a little bit sillier, and of course it was totally Sailor Chibi Moon centric. So a lot of the the show episodes had to do with uh, Chibi Usa or Rini, and the movie is another one of those things where she's not exactly the, I guess she's not exactly the, the main character, but most of it does kind of center around her. So, um, she, she ends up getting, uh, kidnapped uh, along with a bunch of other children by the, uh, villain of the movie. Um, I have no idea what the Japanese pronunciation is, but in English it was body on him. And, uh, so, she's the big bad of this movie, and, uh, we get little cameos from Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune in this movie. So, mm, they weren't present in, in the anime of season four, so, but still, um, it's not exactly my favorite of the three movies, so I'm not saying it's, like, the worst one, it's just my least favorite. So it's like number three out of, you know, the top three. It's it's still okay. There are parts of it that I like. Of course, it's got that deep, deep dubbing with the lines and the voice acting that people say is, like, awful. They're, like I said, they're like, they're like gems in it. Um, so, again, stuff that, you know, if you grew up with the deep dub, you can, like, say the lines, like, verbatim, because you've seen them so many times. So, but it's it still has some gems in it. Um, of course, my favorite one that I talked about before was the Sailor Moon R movie. Uh, the Promise of the Rose, as it was called in the dub, and it's, it's my favorite out of the three movies. Um, of course, Sailor Moon R, the second season. Um, so it takes place around around there, because it's kind of weird, because Chibi Usa knows that Usagi is her mom in the future, and it's just kind of weird. But, um, and of course, the kind of main character that the movie centers around is, of course, Mamoru, Tuxedo Mask, and his past with... With Fiore, um, so um, I just I just really like it, and uh, of course you know it's got a little bit of that romance, and of course anything you know Serena Darian, Usagi, Mamaru, I love it. So um, and you know it kind of also you know since it focuses more on tuxedo mask, of course I like it. So. Um, you know, we have to learn things about him because we don't get to know too much about him in the, the anime, except that, you know, he lost his parents when he was six, and he lost his memories, and then he got them back, and, you know, past life, serenity, endymion, all that, but, you know, we don't know anything else about him. So, it's, it's a nice movie, and, of course, I know every single line of this one, so no offense to Viz Media's dub of it. I just, I grew up watching this one, and, uh, I used to actually rent this from the video store until one day me and my mom went to Blockbuster, and it was actually on sale, and I'm so glad, because some of the sale ones had stickers on them, because I bought a couple of, of other, other uh, tapes like this that had stickers on them, so I'm so glad it didn't have a sticker on it, because, also, I love, I love this cover art on the front, it's just, it's so pretty, and it doesn't show very well on my camera, but the little rose petals in the back, they're, well, they're kind of, they're metallic a little bit, so I love this. This is my favorite one, oh, my favorite Sailor Moon movie, and then, of course, so, uh, by process of elimination, my second favorite would be the Sailor Moon S movie, and uh, it was called Hearts in Ice. 
and um, the main character it kind of centers around is actually Luna. And um, it's it's based off a uh, story from the actual manga, uh, Princess Kaguya's lover, and they actually turned it in. They turned it into uh, the movie for the third season, and uh, so Luna gets rescued from being hit by a car by a um, a, a scientist named Kakaru, and he's you know. He's really into, you know, the moon and, you know, planets and shooting stars and stuff like that. And uh, so he saves he saves Luna from being hit by a car and takes her home and takes care of her. And she ends up falling in love with him. And, uh, you know, it may it may sound weird, but uh, also this this is anime. Uh, so anything can happen. But uh, but yeah, she she falls in love with him and he has. He has a childhood sweetheart named Himiko, and, you know, he, like, he believes, like, there used to be a princess on the moon, which is kind of funny to think about it, and she, she's more realistic than that, and, you know, but they do love each other, but, you know, so it's, it's really actually a very touching movie, um, it's why it's my second favorite also because, you know, I saw Promise of the Rose like 15,000 times and then, you know, I found this one when they had it for sale at uh, Blockbuster. And, uh, but I, I like it and it's it's nice to, f you know, focus on different characters and, you know, I mean, there's not really a lot going on with Luna, but, but it's nice to focus on her and, you know, it kind of, it kind of touches into, you know, her relationship with Artemis, because we all know, we all know as uh, Sam and Vance how that pans out. But you know, it's I like it. It's it's really it's really touching, and uh, you know, a lot of people again because it's uh, a deep dub. A lot of people, um, if you grew up with the deep dub like me, you're used to Jill Frapey or doing Luna's uh, what do they call it, British nanny voice, uh, and. Uh, a lot of people who've seen like the original anime are like, uh, Luna's supposed to be almost like the same age as Usagi and the other girls, so she shouldn't, you know, sound like that. But apparently Jill Rapier did a good job. She was Luna the entire time. They, you know, did the first dub, so and you know, I just I grew up with it and you know but a lot of people like it it doesn't really fit. But I think it works. It works pretty o pretty okay. Um, so when there is a scene where Luna cries in the movie, and she does kind of cry in this cat kind of voice uh, instead of more like a human voice, and you know it it sounds like it could be really cheesy, um, but it's it's very powerful and emotional. And of course, in all three movies, uh, Sailor Moon's voiced by Terry Hawks. So, I think she did all the movies before she went on maternity leave, which is kind of weird because one movie's for the third season, another one's for the fourth season, and she wasn't around to do those. So, I'm not exactly sure when or why they decided maybe to dub the movies earlier or later. I don't know, but still. It's that Terry Hawks era, uh, and it's my favorite. Uh. So, I'll put my movies to the side and. Um, with my little dolls over to the side. So, um, this video might be running just a little bit long because, like I said, I'm not really sure exactly what to talk about. I know things that I want to talk about, but i um, not exactly sure what to talk about. I guess um, doing like a little bit of mentions, um, I guess, for, uh, of course, Save the Moon, um, I'll go ahead and talk about. Uh, the voice actors that have done uh, Sailor Moon. For the first 11 episodes in the uh, original dub, she was voiced by Tracy Moore. Um, she, uh, in, well, for me, for my generation of Care Bears, she voiced uh, Cheer Bear. So um, she did that for 11 episodes. She was actually like one of the, the voice directors 
in the beginning. So I think she did it until they could find a suitable, you know, actress to, you know, continue the role. And um, Tracy Moore and Terry Hawks actually worked on Care Bears. Um, Terry Hawks did the voice of uh, uh, Baby Baby Hugs, I think that's what it was. Baby Hugs, the little pink baby bear. And she also did the voice of uh, No Heart's Niece, Shrieky. So, um, so they knew each other. So I guess that's how uh, Terry got involved through Tracy. I'm not exactly sure. So um, episodes after that, Terry did the voice for Sailor Moon. Um, I think maybe like two or three episodes, Tracy came back in again. But uh, so Terry Hawks was uh, Sailor Moon Serena for the whole rest of season one and season two of Sailor Moon. And then, like I said in a previous video, when she became pregnant, um, instead of overexerting herself, they, you know, they found a replacement and they found Linda Ballantyne to take over. And I think in the beginning they were trying to tell Linda to kind of do it like Terry. And I think eventually Linda just tried to do her own thing with it. And, uh, you know, uh, Terry Hawks has said, uh, in her appearances at conventions and stuff that, you know, she knows a lot of people give, uh, Linda Flack for, you know, her voicing of Sailor Moon, but she says that, you know, it takes, it takes a lot, uh, of, you know, I guess guts to go in and take over the role from somebody else who's been doing it for so long and, you know, Terry has her own dub haters that, you know, still don't think her voice is, you know, the best. But uh, it does. It takes a lot to come in and follow somebody else in a role that they've done for so long. And, you know, it went, you know to try to repeat that and be like, well, do it exactly how this person did it. And, you know, you can't really imitate anybody. I mean... You know, there are people who can do impersonations of people, but, you know, often imitated, but never duplicated. Uh, so, and like I said, I I was kind of thrown off from Linda at first, but I didn't think it was too bad. Uh, when she did more of the serious, serious stuff, it worked better. Um, she grew into, like, the goofier parts, but about, like I said, around the time the fourth season was done being dubbed, and then, of course... They weren't going to be doing stars at that time because they didn't know how to make it so more PC for younger kids to watch. You know, by the time she was getting good, they were done. Oh. So, and of course, the Viz Media dub has uh, has Stephanie Shea doing Usagi, and uh, I I think she she does okay. Like I said, I'm you know, I guess I would say I'm kind of like a deep dub purist. So it takes me a lot to, you know, get used to hearing somebody that's not Terry Hawks doing, you know, the character that I grew up watching. And I think Stephanie Shea does a good job. Um, I really, I really like her doing Sailor Moon Crystal. Because, um, as I said, you know, Sailor Moon Crystal follows more of the, the manga continuity. So it's not redubbing the original anime. It's, you know dubbing it from Japanese into English, and, you know, um, I've, you know, I've watched Sailor Moon Crystal, and, of course, since I love the manga, I love Sailor Moon Crystal a lot, and, uh, all the, uh, the drama about it, since the manga is much, uh, more darker and mature than the anime, um, both in art style and, um, story, she pulls off the drama very well, and I, I really like it, and, uh, I think, sh I think she's doing a good job, I, I can't wait to see what happens with, uh, with her doing, um, Sailor Moon Stars, because that, I read the manga, it's really heavy-handed, I've seen the anime, and it's, it's different, but it's still a very heavy, poignant kind of storyline because it's near the end of the series so um 
kind of uh, looking forward to that. So, so that's about uh, all of the Sailor Moon voice actors. And like I said, this video is going to run a little long. Um, maybe I'll talk about the other ones next time. But I am definitely going to talk about the voice actors for Tuxedo Mask. I have my little, my little tuxedo doll. I do. I love my, my little tuxedo mask doll. So, like Tracy Moore, the first 11 episodes um, for Darien, or Mamoru, whichever you want to call him, but in the uh, deep dub, he was voiced by Reno Romano, who went on to voice uh, the Batman. Um, so, uh, I didn't really get to watch that series of it. I was more like the, you know, the Batman that had, like, you know, Kevin Conroy doing it. But uh, I did see the movie, a uh, little, little bits of, you know, Batman versus Dracula, where Reno Romano does the voice of Bruce Wayne. And uh, I like his voice. His voice is kind of like a little more, you know, uh, kind of streetwise a little bit. So it made him a little bit more snarky. And as Tuxedo Mask, it was... It was, it was okay. Um, so after the uh, first 11 episodes, I don't know what happened, but uh, Reno was replaced by Toby Proctor, who uh, voiced the Darien character, you know, all the way up into, like, the mid part of season two. And, uh, of course, um, I love Toby's, Toby's voice as a uh, Darian. Um, he did kind of have like this little bit of charm to his voice when he could, but when he had to be a little more comedic, it was like, if it was like something unbelievable, he'd be like, you've like, you've got to be kidding. Me. And it just, it fit a little bit better. And, you know, um, when he had to be more dramatic, it worked, it worked really well. And, uh, of course he, you know, he was the voice actor of Tuxedo Mask for one of my favorite episodes, which is uh, the one from season two where it kind of has like the Sleeping Beauty storyline, because uh, that's my favorite fairy tale, and, you know, Sleeping Moon and Sleeping Beauty throw it together. I love it. And I think he did, he did a good job having to be, you know, dramatic and tormented and, you know, I just love my Tuxedo Mask. <laughs> I could, I could sing the song that Reedy does in the dub, but I'm not going to do it because I'm already like, you know, already like spazzing over here with, uh, you know, my cheeks being all rosy and stuff. But, uh, so for the, uh, movies and the rest of, uh, the series that we got up to season four, um, Toby, Toby left to go do Police Academy, the series of and um, he was replaced by Vincent Carraza, who in the first half of season two voiced Alan in the Doom Tree arc. And uh, so when he did the voice for Alan, he was kind of was kind of okay as like being you know like the, the human Alan in his disguise. But when he had to be like alien Alan, he kind of pushed more like that bad, bad boy kind of bad guy voice and everything. So, um, when they went and did season, uh, two episodes of Sailor Moon, which they call like the lost episodes, because most of the time in North America for animated or some television shows, they only do like 60 something episodes and that's it. That's why a bunch of Disney shows end up getting canceled after a while because they only do like like 65 episodes or so and then that's it but of course people eventually wanted the rest of Sailor Moon so when they came back to do the last 17 episodes of the second season Vincent Carrazza was doing Darian's voice and uh, it, it threw me off because you know you're so used to hearing Toby and then you hear you hear Vincent's voice and it's a lot it's a lot deeper and when he does his tuxedo mask thing, he kind of pushes this tone to his voice. And, uh, so, uh, and of course he, you know, did stuff for like the, 
the fourth season and a lot of a lot of goofy goofy dialogue. Uh, uh, lots of people say bad dialogue. I'm just gonna say goofy because uh, Vincent even said like in one interview with, with um, someone they the way they used to do the uh, dubbing how they'd have like this little like band going across with the dialogue and they would just have to read it. And most of the time, the stuff that they had to read, they had no idea what it was. So, you know, like, kind of like how with The Simpsons, it says that, you know, Homer makes this, like, annoyed grunt and Dan Castellana did the dope. And now, like, you know, instead of, like, annoyed grunt, that's what you, you get. So, I guess they have to do something like, you know, sustained yelling or something or, like, the word... You know, like, going, ah, would be, like, just written across the bottom, or, like, jump, and stuff like that, and you'd have to read it, because, well, that's what you're supposed to read, but he said that, you know, sometimes they wouldn't know exactly what they were going to read until they were right there in, like, a recording session, and I guess, I guess sometimes I'm not, I'm not certain, but I can just, I can just imagine when it was done, like, turning to, like, the voice director, like, what the hell was that? What did I just say? What kind of line was that? So, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. I mean, if you're gonna audition for a play or something, you gotta read what's written. It's not like you can just be like, well, can I just like change something a little bit there? So, I guess as time goes on and, you know, you have the role, they'll let you have a little bit more fun with it. But, so, uh, but yeah, he, Vince, Vincent was kind of the victim of a lot of, you know, cheesy, cheesy dialogue that he had to say, but, you know, he, you know, he got to be in, you know, the Sailor Moon R movie, and I thought he did really well in that, and, uh, so, um, well, another reason I like, uh, I like gushing about Vincent is, um, he's, he's really hot. <laughs> it's just the honest thing that I can say. Um, He's, you know, he's also a movie actor. He's been in movies. Um, I guess for younger people, you probably know him from Disney Channel movies. He was Jack Will Johnson in The Cheetah Girls, and he played um, the character Albert in Quince, and he was uh, Plunkett, who was Jet Jackson's agent on the famous Jet Jackson, and uh, he, uh, he had bit parts in movies. Most of the movies I know him from are little bit parts in horror movies that he ends up getting killed in. Because uh, I love horror films, and uh, he's he's been in uh, Urban Legend, Bless the Child, and uh, most people would probably know him best as being the cop that gets killed in the beginning of Bride Chucky. So, uh, so yeah, so I've kind of had a crush on him for a, a long time, and I actually got on his website that he has, and I wrote him a note. And, uh, you know, I told him, you know, how, you know, how hot I thought he was and, you know, that he was really good and what small parts that he had. And, uh, uh, he wrote me back and it was just amazing that he, he took time to write me back. And then of course I wrote him back with, you know, being like, oh my God, you wrote me back. That's so great. I can't believe that, you know, you did that. And, you know, so... So I eventually found him on Facebook, and, uh, you know, I, you know, sent a friend request, and, you know, and I follow him on Twitter, and, but, you know, I wish him, you know, I wish him happy birthday on Facebook all the time, and, you know, we, you know, we have, like, little tiny con conversations, nothing, you know, big or deep, but, you know, I'll say, you know, happy birthday, or if he, he posts something, you know, I'll be like, hi, or... Sometimes, you know, when he, you know, he talks about, you know, the shows that he's, he's doing on, you know, Broadway, he, he acts on, he acts on Broadway in, um, musicals, uh, he, uh, he played the, uh, character that Colin Firth plays in Mamma Mia, and, uh, so, I'll just tell him, like, you know, congratulations, or, you know, something like that, and he's a really, he's a really nice guy, you know, I'm gushing about, you know, just because he's hot, but he's, He's a really nice, down-to-earth guy, and he really cares, he really cares about his fans, and, you know, 
it's, it's nice that he'll he'll take the time and answer somebody like like me back. And even then, babbling on like a little awkward idiot. <laughs> so, but you know, it's cool. And I can I can say that about myself. I know that I'm I'm awkward. So, and uh, okay. Um, moving on from that. Um, so when Biz decided they were going to, uh, you know, redub Sailor Moon, they however, they hired uh, Robbie Damon to do the voice of Mamoru, and I really love Robbie's voice too. I guess now that I've heard all of them, I guess it would be um, a tie between Vince and Toby, and then followed by Robbie, and because Rena only did like 11 episodes, he's kind of in. I have to tie I have to tie Vince and Toby because they're the ones that I you know I grew up watching Sailor Moon with, so and they they are my favorites and I can't really put one above the other, so but uh, I do I love Robbie Damon's take on Mam on Mamoru he has just this voice and uh, he does he does pretty well in the comedy but I like when he has to be a little more dramatic like in like in the face of battle and stuff like that he he does a very good job and uh of course i like him doing mamaru tuxedo mask in Sailor Moon crystal and like i said since the story is like a little bit more um kind of darker and a little bit more mature because it follows the manga instead he does he does very well with the voice, and as it progresses, you know, you can hear the emotion in his voice and the emotional parts, and, you know, he's, he's pretty funny, so, but, uh, but, um, because what I always liked about Tuxedo Mask is, you know, a lot of people, you know, give him black that he doesn't do a lot, and of course, in Seven Crystal, which is based on the manga, he gets to do a whole lot more, and, uh, you know, he's a little bit more mature than anime Mamoru and uh, he just he's always there to give support to Sailor Moon and the scouts no matter what and in you know in anime it's all of the scouts he'll he'll be there for all of them and you know give them advice and help them feel better in you know all of his incarnations especially when uh, he's he's the moonlight knight because he does actually give motivational speeches to all of the, the Sailor Scouts as they progress. And, you know, so he's just, he's just, you know, this little, it's like this little conscience. Uh, and he just, he makes, you know, he makes you feel special. And, you know, and of course, he gets really awesome in Sailor Moon Crystal because, you know, he actually has a power and he, like, punches the bad guys and, He's just not there to throw roses and give inspirational speeches from inside Hallmark cards, but still, that's the thing that you like about him. He's he's always there for you. So, um, so I guess that's uh, my take on uh, Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask and their voice actors. And since this video is running pretty long, I guess I'll stop there for today. And I guess the next time I come back. I will give my opinions on the uh, other voice actors. So, uh, until next time, this is Courtney and Tuxedo Mask. Wishing you a good day and uh, see you next time.